Let me try to characterize what most devotees think. Yes, please. If love, if, if I love Krishna, that is true love. But if I love in this world, if I love my child, if I love my parents, if I love my husband or my wife, if I love my cat or I love my dog, this is simply lust. Unfortunately, that is the conception that I find quite prevalent. Here's the problem. We could say, well, how does that occur? Why mm. is that the prevalent understanding? This goes back to um, uh, uh, defective, defective reading of Prabhupada's books. Wow. And a, not, not only a defective reading, but a, a misunderstanding of the nature of Prabhupada's discourse. Two things. I think this needs elaboration, both of these. Yes, yes. yes. indeed, yeah. indeed. It's fascinating, Chaitanya Charanji, because first of all, we have to understand, does Prabhupada come and when he speaks uh, in talks, uh, in lectures, morning walks, or when he writes, is he speaking in a completely systematic way? Is he speaking to, um, in, in ways that are, um, uh, uh, you know, totally intellectually sound and logical and, and uh, airtight, um, cogent, and so on? No, he's teaching with a teaching voice. He will use at times exaggeration. He will use at times hyperbole. He will use absolutisms. He'll state something in absolute language when in reality it is relative. Mm. He's very dramatic. Prabhupada is very dramatic. Yes. If I were to speak the way Prabhupada speaks in the academics, no one would publish my work. Really? Can you give some examples of... Well, okay. Well, the example is exactly what we're talking about. So, Prabhupada will say in places, there is no love in this world. Hmm. And in another place... He will state, love is ubiquitous. Love is everywhere. Look, even, even the cats playing, little kittens playing together. There is love. Mm. So first he is saying, there is no love in this world. It's a very absolute statement. Then he says, but love is everywhere. Both appear to be a contradiction. Mm to remain the same, to take those two statements together, they are contradictory. But what Prabhupada, what we, what we need to understand is how to properly interpret Prabhupada's statements, to absorb Prabhupada's statements. Now, um, I'm going to be, I'm writing about this in, 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 for a publication, but I'll briefly tell you that the Tamasa, understanding of the statement, there is no love in this world. Tamasa Guna uh, influenced uh, interpretation would have us believe that that is the be all and end all. Hmm. As it's stated in the 18th chapter of the Gita, to yeah. take that one statement as the whole of our philosophy is Tamasa Guna. Yes, you know that somehow I feel that is one of the one of the very underused verses in the Gita at 1822 yes. is such a yes. profound verse. Yes, I am referring exactly to that verse, Chaitanya Charanji. See, this is why I like talking with you. You know exactly what I'm speaking about. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. And then, of course, if you take the, that statement, and by the way, this is typical of Kanishta devotees, okay? Narrow-minded, 
Okay. Then if a Madhyama comes along and understands that statement, but in light of other statements that Prabhupada makes, ah, then that's open-minded. And now we have a better, fuller perspective of what Prabhupada is intending to say. Hmm. So, but then if we come along with uh, an Uttama understanding, then we understand that one statement of Prabhupada's in light of the total philosophy. And that is when we can come to a really true and complete understanding. 